My name is Greg and this is my starting over story. So I grew up in Parkersburg, West Virginia in I think what most people would call a pretty typical home. Uh, mom and a dad and one younger brother. Church was not a, a huge part of our life. We did go on Sundays but it was just the place where we had to wear bad socks and I didn't enjoy going. The first time I uh, remember being introduced to alcohol. I was, I was probably about 13 years old. I was hanging out with an, an older kid, his name was Chad, and uh, we stole a couple bottles of wine from my parents' liquor cabinet. And we drank the bottle of wine and we, uh, we made screwdrivers. And when I, when I got home, I remember that I had, uh, we had this downhill driveway uh, into the garage, and I remember the garage door wasn't up, so I remember wrecking into the garage. I remember my parents yelling at me. I remember crying and hugging a toilet. I remember promising that I would never do this again. What I also remember is that even though the consequences were bad, that I thought I had found the answer to life's problems that frankly I didn't even know I had before that day. All the fear and doubt and insecurity in the world just kind of slipped away when I drank and I thought I'd found the answer to life. My parents had different ideas uh, growing up uh, that was not okay in our home. so. I found myself in trouble all the time. It's funny, my mom would say, you know, I needed to get different friends, but what she didn't realize is I had become the friend that other people should get a different one for. Um, that's kind of the route my high school took. I think probably the first time that a light bulb came on, I'd been on a bender, came home to steal money. Um, that was my job. <laughs> I snuck into the house and got caught with my hand in the cookie jar, and rather than coming out up with some lie like I normally would. I remember just saying, I have a problem with drugs and drinking and I, I can't stop and I don't know what to do. And, uh, and so my father actually knew instantly what he wanted to do. So uh, they told me that a van was on its way to my house uh, to come pick me up and take me away to my first treatment center. So I was 17 years old at that time. I felt helpless. Um, and lost and clueless as to how to how I can make it through life because I couldn't imagine life going on as I was living it but I certainly couldn't imagine any other way either at that point. I also looked at my family and realized that I had destroyed any resemblance of what a family is. What, what do I do now? I've thrown away everything. Life's over. Um, I, didn't I, I didn't see how more could happen after, after what I'd done. I won't say that treatment did a lot of good things or life change happened there, but what did happen was I met a counselor named Rob. When Rob would share what it was like for him to want to drink or get high, uh, I knew that Rob was just like me. Uh, and I had grown up, up to that point, thinking I was the only one that felt that way inside. A seed was planted that if Rob could do it, then maybe there was hope for a guy like me too. I had an aunt who lived in Chicago named Fran, and Fran had recently gotten sober herself and offered that if I wanted to change my life, she offered to let me move out with her to give me a new chance and a new start. So I moved out to Chicago. Fran introduced me to a few other people who were closer to my age and also uh, had gotten sober and recovering. I began to have just, a, I guess you'd call it a glimmer of hope, you know, hope that if it was possible for these people, um, that maybe it could be possible for me too. The reality was I was still a long way away, uh, many years away from getting off this downward destructive sorry cycle.